Back at it on Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Don't forget, head over to our YouTube page. I want you to hit the subscribe button. Tell us what you think about the show. Give us a review. Also, too, check me out on Twitter. It is at JMCH316. Thought that Trey Young sent a good message to the officiating after the game the other night, game two in Miami, that, of course, the Hawks lost 115-105, setting up now a must-win scenario coming up starting on Friday. Hawks have to obviously win on Friday and Sunday and keep this thing going out there. Really can't afford, I don't think, to go back down 3-1 to one in Miami, so you have to win two home games. But after the game, he told reporters, quote, obviously we felt we let one slip away, but if the refs are going to let them be as physical as they are and not call fouls, it's going to be hard to really do anything, unquote. Now, look. There's no doubt that the Miami Heat are are going to continue to implement a specific strategy against Trey Young. The book is, let's face it, on Trey is you body him, you physical him, you pick him up high, and you kind of rough him up and beat him up a, a little bit. And the Heat have done a really good job of that. And you know, for being honest, Trey has not had two of his more outstanding shooting games. He was fine from the field the other night, just his three-point shooting left a lot to be desired. And, of course, all the turnovers that, <coughs> excuse me, led to so many Miami Point uh, or Miami Heat uh, baskets um, the other night. You look at the free throw disadvantage, I guess, if you will. The Heat shot almost twice as many free throws as what the Hawks did. This is Trey to me sending a message about the idea of, okay, guys, when I come back home and I am the star, we got to get this thing on a little bit more even keel. Now, I think the Heat, uh, or I should say the Hawks, can also help Trey Young out with the idea of setting some picks up high and getting him free. And that may be even in, you know, say when you inbound uh, the ball, even getting some of that before he crosses over, you know, the half court uh, strike. So freeing him up and getting him to where he can get a little bit loose and get up a little bit of a head of steam. But I do like the idea of Trey putting that out there because I thought overall the officiating in the game left a lot to be desired. All right, let's let's call it like it is. The officiating was dreadful. It wasn't very good. And you got Kyle Lowry out there like he's the scarecrow. You know, he's throwing his arms up and he's running into people and he's knocking people down and all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, he's out there acting like a goofball. Dead men and these guys are going up and over guys. <coughs> They, they really played a physical brand of basketball and didn't get a lot of calls for it, which is okay if you're going to call that consistent. But if you're not going to consistently call it, and they didn't call it consistent because on one hand, Lowry's flapping and flopping and flying and flooping and all this kind of goofy stuff. <coughs> but Trey, or I should say, but Lowry, when he's going to the basket, is picking up these ticky-tack fouls and getting a chance for a three-point play. So the officiating, <coughs> excuse me, was dreadful in that game. That has to change. Well, that's the message that Trey Young is trying to send to the officials. I mean, they have to get better. This thing has to even up a little bit, and it has to be not so one-sided disadvantage against the Hawks because the Hawks are not a team that <coughs> is going to go out and get physical with you and want to fight you. They may be able to do some of that inside with you if they have Capella, okay? But without that, their perimeter players, Gallinari, Herter, Bogey, Trey, the last thing that those guys are known for is their physical play. The last thing that anybody's going to use to describe Trey Young is a physical player. Now, give Trey a lot of credit. He played the eighth most minutes in the NBA this past season. So it's not like Trey isn't tough. It's not like Trey isn't durable. But he only shot four free throws the other night. And for a guy like Trey, who had 20 shots from the field and only found a way to get four free throws out of it, there is something wrong with that. <clears throat> and Trey is an established enough star now that he should be able to find his way into getting calls. If you look at the regular season, he was one of the most – um, how do I say, or I, let me, let me put it like this. He was a guy who finished, I think in the top five in free throw attempts 
on the season. So during the regular season, he did a really good job of finding his way to the free throw stripe. Well, four times in a game that is very tough, very physical in playoff basketball, and when the Miami Heat are shooting whatever it was, 29 free throws in a game, and he's got four, something has to give there. So I'm hoping that the home cooking, and I mean this sincerely, I'm hoping that there is some home cooking that if you're going to tell me that the Miami Heat did or did not get some of the calls that they had simply because they're the home team and, you know, you got to earn it on the road, okay, that script needs to flip coming up on Friday. And I thought it was important for Trey Young to get his message out there that, hey, if you're going to let them bottom me up and get physical, you're going to have to at the same time, you know, either call it both ways, give me some calls or figure something out. But it can't be this big of a discrepancy. And I know Steve Holman on the broadcast talked about like this was a, a very young and, and probably sort of inexperienced playoff group of officials that they had the other night. Hopefully that, you know, dynamic is isn't what hurts the Hawks or whatever like that. They've got plenty of their own things that they have to fix, right? The, the Hawks have to figure out how to hit wide open shots. The Hawks have to figure out how not to turn over the basketball so much. The Hawks have to figure out how to get a better shot selection, moving the ball more around the perimeter. They've got plenty of their own things to figure out. But you don't want to get in a situation where you're not only at home and you're fighting, scratch, and calling for your own life, but you're also having to overcome the lack of quality officiating in the game. And I thought that was one of the things that just stood out. You know, this all kind of spurred itself from the offensive foul that Trey Young picked up late in that game going after a ball and uh, he's run into by a heat defender and he gets an offensive foul called on him. And I don't know how they determined it was an offensive foul, but he gets the call on him and he ends up looking at the official and saying, your effing calls are trash. Now, I think I've said that a lot of times in my life to certain people, but um, it's true. You know, the effing calls were trash in that game the other night. And Trey took an opportunity to make sure that he put a bug in their ear that, hey, man, I'm a star, too. Let's get this thing back on track. We're at home on Friday. Let's make sure we call a good game so that I don't have to tell you that your effing calls are trash again uh, for it. So don't forget, Hawks and Heat uh, coming up uh, on Friday. We're going to kind of preview the game tomorrow and take a look at what the Hawks need to do to get back in this series. When we get back, though, the Washington Nationals are lucky that there weren't missiles deployed to – knock these bogeys out of the sky. I'll explain all of that next. It is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery on Locked on Sports Atlanta.